I was commissioned by a gentleman to make him a box with some very specific requirements. He even drew me some basic plans. The biggest challenge though is he wanted the locks to all be concealed and to be opened up with a coaster of my own design. This is what I came up with. I sort of built this box from the inside out, so the first part I made was the walnut divider. That started with resawing and drum sanding some walnut down to 3 16 of an inch thick pieces. All the pieces were then cut out and mitered on the table saw. I taped the opposite sides of the divider tray together while cutting the dados. This worked really well to make sure that they matched perfectly. I did half lap joints where all the inside pieces would intersect each other. No joke, but everything fit perfectly on the first try. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to purchase some reclaimed koa wood. These pieces were once part of the interior cabin of a yacht that was salvaged in Bellingham, Washington several years ago. Koa is extremely rare. It only grows on the big island of Hawaii and can only be harvested from trees that are fallen down or are dying. Because this is likely the only koa wood I'm ever going to get to work with, I wanted to make it go as far as possible. The panel that I had started off at about 5 eighths thick. I was able to cut that into 6 thin slices. The core of the box was made from 9-ply Baltic birch plywood. Aside from being void-free and very flat, it is also incredibly dimensionally stable. Here you can see all nine plies in this half inch thick piece. Birch plywood doesn't exactly scream high end, so I glued on the koa veneers. For this project, I decided to invest in a vacuum bag system, and this is literally the first time I ever used it. I purchased this equipment at veneersupplies.com, which is a small, independently owned business. Their customer service has been so awesome that I really wanted to take the time to mention them. I pre-cut out the space where the locking mechanism would go for the front side. Here you can see how the locking mechanism will fit in there. I'll show how I actually made this lock in the second part of this project video. I cut these pieces a little oversized because at the time I was still trying to hammer up my final dimensions. Once the koa was glued on, I squared up the board. This was to make some good gluing surfaces for the Cocobolo accents. Cocobolo is a fairly rare tropical hardwood, and like the koa, I didn't have very much of it and I wanted to make it go as far as possible. It's also fairly oily, so PVA glues don't work very well on it. However, polyurethane glues do. After gluing on the Cocobolo accents, I sanded the panels down to 5 8 inch thick total. This left my veneers at a sixteenth of an inch thick, which is good thickness for humidity changes and also not so thin that I was worried about sanding through it. I'm well aware that this is about the most backwards way I could have done this. I forgot to leave a space for the lower drawer lock. Luckily I was able to add it after the fact. Like the lid lock, I'll show how I made the locking mechanism for the drawer in the second part of this project video. Because I hadn't totally planned out the full dimensions of this box when I started, I did end up wasting a little bit of the koa wood. 
Before cutting the box miters, I did add provisions for the tray support and for the bottom panel. I also took a little time to finish fitting the lid lock mechanism. After some choice words, I was able to glue that piece back on. Before going any further, I really wanted to make sure this lock would still work. And then I finished cutting out the mortise. There's definitely easier ways of making a box, but I've shown how to do that in several other videos. This was kind of a test to see if it would work, and it really did. I used the masking tape to hold the upper and lower parts of the box together while I cut the miters. At this point, I finally got my final dimensions figured out, so I narrowed down the thickness of the lid. My actual top panel is a piece of 1 8 Baltic birch plywood with a piece of koa on the top and walnut on the bottom. I pre-sanded all the interior surfaces before gluing them together. Because the lower part of the box was wide enough, I used dominoes to hold the miters together. Before I could route out the rabbits for my cocobolo'd edge details, I needed to temporarily secure the drawer face. I elected to use the old super glue and masking tape trick and it worked well. I promise this will make more sense as this project progresses. Watch the bearing on this rabbiting bit. I screwed up and forgot to put the washer under the screw head, so the bearing was essentially not being held on with anything. Now listen closely. Koa, as it turns out, is very prone to splinter. I adjusted to a reverse feed direction. This prevented the splintering, but I still needed to fix the damage I had already done. After the repair, you couldn't even notice. This is what the rough cut coca bolo looks like. I squared it up and cut some tiny little strips.
These were glued in with the polyurethane glue as well. Flush cutting the Coca-Bolo was nerve wracking, but it actually machined a lot better than the Koa did. I still needed to glue in the supports for the upper tray, so I took care of that now. This wasn't the first test fit, but the dividers do fit in here really well. This project video will continue in part two where I'll show how I made the locks with a lot more detail. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.